Hey, Gopher fans, it's another edition of Gopher Talk. It's presented by Affinity Plus Federal Credit Union, a locally member-owned, full-service financial invested in you. You can learn more at affinityplus.org. I'm Mike Grimm uh, with Gopher Radio and gophersports.com. And what an exciting time to be a fan of the Golden Gopher volleyball team this week. Moved from number five up to number four in the country, coming off of uh, a couple of wins over the weekend. Number 16, Baylor goes down on Saturday and TCU goes down on Sunday. And Ellie Huseman is with us. She's from Egan, Minnesota, and she uh, played a role over the weekend. And Ellie uh, from Austin, Texas, good to see you. Nice to see you too. Thanks for having me. Now, there's no school in session, so you guys played in the Dallas-Fort Worth area over the weekend and then uh, hightailed it down to Austin. And you guys, I know, have been practicing locally in Austin, getting ready for a match we'll preview here in a second with the number one Texas uh, on Wednesday night. But um, uh, how has that been as kind of a team bonding experience, uh, you know, just to be out and about? And, you know, Austin's not a not a bad place to, to be stationed, I suppose, if you got to be away from the Twin Cities. Yeah, it's been great. We really enjoyed all the team time together. I think it's just brought us closer, getting to kind of walk around and explore the different campuses. And we went bowling and like arcade games yesterday as a team. So overall, it's been really fun. What did you find out early? I mean, obviously it's two matches in, but what did you find out about this? Because there's some new group, a uh, new group of players. There's some chemistry that, you know, you got to see it's one thing to do it in practice. Mm-hmm. And think you're good. It's another than to go out (laughs) at least uh, through the first two matches. What did you find out about this group, uh, maybe after two matches now and and two impressive wins? Yeah, I think coming into the matches, we knew that this was a special group. I think just the way that we gelled in practice and the way that we competed every day, um, it's already been great. So getting to transition into being like all of us against another team, it's been out of this world, I think just the way that we play with each other and cheer each other on and support each other. And like, we're helping people on the bench are helping those on the court. And it's just super open dialogue. It's unlike any group that we've ever had. So made us feel really good going into these next few weeks of competition for sure. Yeah. And how much does it help to like, you know, this, but to get it kind of affirmed so far by how you played too, to, to beat a really good Baylor team, which then knocked off mm-hmm. Wisconsin the next day to kind of say, yeah, a little affirmation there that uh, we may be onto something pretty special here. Yeah, it was huge. I think every year we know that we're a good group. It's like, we're a good group of girls and we have those skills, but then being able to know how we play together really well just kind of reaffirms that yeah we got some high goals but I think this could be the group to do it so it just makes us feel like we're on the right path and just gives us all the confidence boost to know and how about you personally as you've kind of progressed up through your career uh, getting maybe a bit a bit more of an opportunity now to contribute here particularly you know this season how much fun uh, was that for you to to be able to take part and and have a a big impact over the weekend and, and certainly weeks going forward too yeah it was great I think we know that our goal is a team goal, but we also all have our own personal goals and just being able to be out there and help my team and show off what I can do has been really, really fun. And I'm excited to keep doing the, doing my best for the team. So, yeah. Um, when, when you think about, you know, your role, uh, and, and everybody else's role, because, you know, there were some players who graduated last year that, you know, I mean, one a real high level player, obviously in <laughs> yeah. staff and, and some others. So, um, how do you think about it in terms of, uh, you know, just making your own role as opposed to, Oh, I mm-hmm. have to fill this person's spot, or I have to do what she might've done last year. Is that, is that hard or is that something that you just don't even think about? No, I was looking forward to kind of coming into my own role and my own like leadership position and what works for me. I think with the, our leaders in the past, we know Steph and we know Reagan, all these great players and what they brought to the court and to the team. And I was excited to kind of find my own role and how I wanted to like show up for the girls every day. So it's been a really fun journey to gain that confidence and now being an upperclassman and kind of knowing the ropes, um, just finding out my own way of doing things and how I want to be the best for the team in terms of like being a leader, being a good teammate, and then also the actual like on the court stuff. So it's been a really fun journey and I'm excited for it. Your teammate, uh, Melanie Shaftmaster was big 10 setter of the week. What did you see from her over the weekend that maybe has you, I mean, we know she's a good player, but maybe yeah. has you excited looking forward to it in terms of what this team can accomplish and, and the role she has to play. Yeah. I think she's grown so much already than these past, this past two games and this whole spring, I think she's really coming to her own and she's just delivering good ball after ball. That's amazing to help our hitters. And um, I just think she has a lot more confidence in herself and she knows that she plays a big role and she's looking at like right in the eye and she's excited to 
take it on. So I'm really proud of her. And I, if this is the beginning, I think there's no ceiling. She's going to be amazing. So it's been really, really fun. And then Taylor Landfair, who, you know, suffered through all those challenges last year, injuries and the like, and, um, you know, she's, she had a pretty impactful weekend as well. What's it oh, like yeah. to have her back, uh, you know, playing the way, you know, everyone uh, was hoping they'd get to see last year before, you know, all yeah. those changes hit. Yeah, I'm in awe of Taylor. I mean, coming back from an injury and seeing her light up on the court, there's really nothing quite like it. And sometimes after she hits a ball 10 foot line, I just like stop and look at her and be like, what was that? So it's been awesome to see her back out on the court doing her thing and just having fun playing. It's it's really special to see because I know it's been a long journey for her. So it's been great to have her back. So you get the two wins this past weekend. You guys stay in Texas. You get to do some bowling. I think you're mm-hmm. practicing uh, on campus there. So you got a yep. few practices and workouts in and those kind of things. And then it's just number one, Texas. They, uh, <laughs> they had an impressive weekend last weekend. So they hopped Nebraska into the top spot. So uh, I, I guess it'd be foolish for me to ask you, like, uh, how do you prevent a letdown coming off of a big weekend last weekend? But you look at the schedule and it's a top ranked team. I mean, you guys got to be pumped up for the opportunity, I would think. Oh, definitely. I think we're all looking forward. It's kind of a weird amount of time that we're just waiting to play on Wednesday, but I know everyone, as the days get closer and we're practicing and watching film, we're like, come on, bring on Wednesday. Let's do this. Um, No, but we're really looking forward to it. I think our preseason schedule itself is tough, but knowing we get to play at the top team is, it just makes it that more exciting and helps us continue to work for things, even though maybe we're not feeling great. It's like, no, we got to be at our best. So Let's continue to grind because we got a big game coming up. So, yeah, spirits are high. It's going to be good. I know Coach McCutcheon uh, oftentimes talks about you guys uh, worrying about yourselves. Um, but mm-hmm. also, how much do you now look at Texas, maybe watch some film? What what do the Longhorns bring to the court? And what might you guys you know do to try to counter some of what they do? Yeah, I mean, we've definitely been and we have some tactical things that we can do against them. And we've been focusing on that. But at the end of the day, it's what we do on our side of the net. I think we have the skills, we have the grit, we have all that we need to beat them. So now it's just like putting that together and adding in a few of those technical things because they got some big hitters and they have some they're really good. So it's just putting all that into play and then just playing our game out the other side. So. You mentioned the uh, the tough non-conference schedule. You had, as we mentioned, Baylor last week. You've got, uh, you know, Texas tomorrow. Uh, then you mm-hmm. open at home Sunday. I think Florida's 13th. And then you got like yeah. Oregon, who's ninth and Stanford, who's in the top 15 or 10 or whatever it is. Um, how, how, I mean, is that great? I mean, do you like that? Would you like a breather in between there? Or, or do you want to <laughs> bring, bring everybody you can? And, and when Big Ten starts, you guys will be battle tested. Yeah, I think I say bring it on. I think better to play these amazing teams now so that we're not surprised when we get into the Big Ten, because as everyone knows, the Big Ten's tough and it's not going to get any easier. So if we can just start with that high level play and then just be used to that as we move forward, it's only going to help us as we move throughout the season and eventually into the tournament when like a preseason, every team is good. So just a good fall all the way around. (laughs) Um, not to overlook or get past, uh, you know, the match with Texas, but how eager are you guys to to play at Maturi Pavilion in front of your your loyal fans? Try not to think about it yet. Trying to just get through this trip, but I think in the back of everyone's head, they're like, "Let's play at home. Let's let's have our own fans. We're so looking forward to it." But one game at a time. <laughs> Last one for you. I wanted to ask you, Egan, Minnesota, you came up through the, you know, the local club program as well. Um, mm-hmm. Playing for Minnesota now, what, um, you know, what, what's that been like to, to play here in your home state and wear the maroon and gold and, and see the impact that volleyball, uh, you know, has on the community? Yeah, there's nothing quite like it. I think when I was a little girl, it's all I wanted to do was play for my home state, home school. Um, and being able to actually live it I sometimes have to just take a step back and think like this is this is people's dreams so you got to soak it in even when it gets tough because like I said there's really nothing like it and I'm just holding on to every moment every opportunity because maroon and gold you only get to wear it for a certain amount of years so it's been awesome well it's been fun watching good luck tomorrow against the Longhorns we'll look forward to seeing uh, you and your teammates back home on campus next week for uh, uh, another set of really good matches and uh, and it's been great so we'll look forward to seeing you thanks Ellie thank you all right it is Gopher Talk presented by Affinity Plus Federal Credit Union so long Gopher fans